very much for being here. Today we're taking a hard look at patent litigation. Specifically, we're looking at the practice of some entities that engage in aggressive pre-litigation practices based on alleged patent infringements. We all agree that patent holders should be protected under the law. They should be able to assert patent protection <clears throat> methods. Patents are incredibly important in our economy, and we all agree that a patent holder should receive compensation for their innovation. Unfortunately, there are some bad actors in this sphere who are aggressively asserting that a patent they own has been infringed on in a manner that some believe is, in fact, deceptive. Examples brought to our attention include a business that accumulates patents, often by purchasing them from defunct camp companies or directly from individual investors. The companies then make use of patents that are ambiguous or broadly written in order to maximize the number of companies which they can assert the patent. These companies generally do not make or sell anything related to these patents. Instead, they identify companies using a technology that it can allege is an infringement of the patent. Then they write a letter to the alleged infringer stating that infringement has occurred and litigation will commence unless the license agreement is entered, licensing agreement is entered into, i.e., pay, pay us or we will sue you for patent infringement. This practice seems to have initially started with technology companies. However, other industries, including retailers, hospitals, banks, restaurants, and the gaming industry, have become targets as well. This practice concerns me, as I, as I am sure it concerns many senators. If frivolous lawsuits are being filed across my state of Nevada because a coffee shop allows their customer to use Wi-Fi in Reno, or a Las Vegas casino receives a demand letter on a game they offer, it can have a negative impact on the economy because it could hinder innovation and, of course, economic growth. So, I do not believe that there's any question that this practice is taking place. It is. What I hope this hearing today shed light on is the scope of the problem, most appropriate method to stem this behavior. It's my understanding that the Federal Trade Commission has authority to act under the exi existing Section 5 authority to enforce against unfair and deceptive acts and practices. I also understand uh, I understand that they are waiting for the results of their own 6B study to be completed before moving forward. I think it's important to see that study, or at least the very least have a strong understanding of the scope of the issues before us, especially before moving on to any proposal that may be used that may be under the committee's jurisdiction regarding the FTC. I also know that patent reform is an issue that the Judiciary Committee has looked at and will continue to look at. Many of the issues that will be discussed here will also be solved by passing rulemaking authority, uh, instructing the Patent and Trademark Office to enforce standards on these demand letters. I hope that we can aid in solving this problem by using this hearing today to shed light on this issue, but this committee is somewhat limited due to the narrow scope and lane of jurisdiction that we have. Nevertheless, this is an important issue, and I thank the Chairwoman for, for holding this hearing today. And even by holding this hearing, we are drawing attention to it, and rightfully so. So again, thanks, uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, for holding this hearing to discuss ways in which we can work to ensure patent holders can protect their pa pa patents. Frivolous patent lawsuits are mitigated. Thank you.